Town Council for the night of 10 April 2017. Please uh, stand with me. And uh, you may forsake the Lord's Prayer, I intend to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Please join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, Mast. Senator Frank Ruff, the delegate right uh, to attend the meeting tonight to give us and the public an update on the General Assembly. And we want to welcome them to crew. I know they're here often uh, anyway, but uh, not always in a, in a formal capacity, I guess. But, but uh, we, we really appreciate your work in Richmond and your work in, in the district. And uh, we give you the floor. Whoever wants to go first. Okay. Last <laughs> Frank, I can go first because he always, he always bats the clean up and then catches all the things I miss. <laughs> uh, first, I want to say that I appreciate the way y'all start your meetings. In the General Assembly, the only thing different we do is we uh, have the prayer first and then the pledge. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what y'all do tonight. That is it. Yeah. We, yeah, we do the, the, the prayer and the pledge. God is our country. And I think that is something that is, that is uh, very important. And I'm glad to see that this, this town council still does that. Um, there's a few things I want to mention tonight about the, about the uh, General Assembly session and the as usual, the main thing is the budget. This is the third year in a row that we have we've had a balanced budget with no tax increases or no or, and no fee increases, and we finished on time. So that's something I think that, that you know speaks well for the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have a constitutional amendment that says we have to have a balanced budget, and I think the federal government would be operating a lot smoother and have a lot less contention if they operate by the same thing. Some of our priorities included uh, salary increases. The state employees hadn't had a salary increase in a very, uh, very good, good while. They got a 3% increase. Uh, the sheriff's deputies and state-supported local employees got a 2% increase. Uh, our state police, for those of you who may have been following that situation, they were in a very uh, well, precarious situation. They, they were not only unable to recruit um, they were unable to retain the people that they had. They were losing them to, to uh, localities that, that could pay them more uh, in some positions than they were making the, the state police. And of course, the Capitol Police, for those of you who have been to Richmond, uh, to the Capitol, know what an outstanding job that is. That's a very professional police force, too. So they were included, included in the raise. Um, we're glad that we were able to give the, the sheriff's deputies a raise too, because they, they do a very good job at, uh, at, at very, not very um, high pay. Uh, we also were able to give uh, the state portion of the, the teacher raise, 2%, and that's effective in February 2018. And the other thing we did um, that was not in the introduced budget was a request from the constitutional officers uh, it's a career, what they call a CDP, and it's a career development program. And that helps them have trained and, and uh, uh, highly trained people uh, that can take over for them if something happens and, and uh, they can better serve the public. So that, that's some of the things that, that, uh, that, that took place as far as, it, as the budget was concerned. And then, too, uh, there's a couple of items that, that uh, the town and the, the, uh, the county they asked me to work on being frank. One of them was a budget amendment for Piedmont Regional Jail. And there was a, a study done by the Department of Corrections. And they identified the need for 44 additional employees. Uh, $1.2 million was the amount. And uh, the Department of Corrections did the study, and the, uh, the Workers' Compensation Board was behind it. They helped draft the amendment. But it didn't pass, and I didn't didn't like that. But I didn't feel quite as bad when I realized that the that the chairman of appropriations had a, uh, 
also have reasonable value in his area, which um, they need to fund in a similar situation. So um, that was one thing that I was saw it happen. Another thing, what uh, Frank and I both put in the request for jaylock study for the lottery. Uh, we've been talking about every five percent of that going uh, coming back to the localities. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the reason given was that they just had all the studies they could they could handle. So we'll have to see and put, put uh, pass and take next year and, and so forth. And uh, I know that uh, a lot of localities in this area have supported that on uh, the councils and, and board of supervisors and so forth. So I wanted to tell you about those those things. Another thing, uh, I had a request from the mayor to put in a, a bill that uh, concerning uh, park rangers. Uh, and they're the ones that, that carry firearms. Now, uh, right, law enforcement. Yes, that's right, law enforcement part of it. Uh, when the bill was written last year, we thought we covered everybody. But that was one, and we might find somebody else that we want to look. But we left them out, and I'm glad you caught that, because, you know, those uh, employees also encounter situations in, in which they have to deal with people <coughs> that uh, they may not want to uh, after their retirement, meet on the street for like having some protection. And this allows them to be able to to, uh, to carry a, a weapon after they retire, and uh, I think it's 10 years that it has to have to serve before they can do that. So that was a good idea, and, and uh, it, it passed. Um, another thing that I will, I'll touch on, you know, it's, it's called the veto session that we just finished. And I was talking um, with Phil um, before we came in, I thought that was a very appropriate name for the session this year. And I just want to mention a few bills that, you know, passed by both houses and, and were very good bills that, that were vetoed. And in order to override a veto, you have to have two thirds of each house. Well, we don't have that in each house to be able to overturn a veto. So the, the governor made a statement that, uh, you know, that he was going to have. Well, he might have not might not have made a statement, but it was a fact that he had more vetoes than any other governor, and none of his ever been overturned. And uh, I'll give you an example of one. Uh, House Bill 1428 required that, that voters submitting an absentee ballot had to have some proof of identification, a photo ID. When you go to the polls of voting person, you've got to have that. So that was a little loophole in the law, and that was that was one that was vetoed. So now a person can send in an absentee ballot and have any proof of who they actually are. Hmm. Um, another one is uh, High School 1852. Um, and, you know, we hear a lot about uh, domestic abuse and, and so forth. And, and uh, when a, a person, most time, uh, the, the, uh, the woman in the, in the house is uh, physically abused and uh, has a domestic violence, uh, she'll be, be given a, a, a protective order by a judge. And so, the legislation that we passed in both houses said that, you know, uh, didn't say didn't say it was a man or woman, but it would apply to women most of the time. Whenever they were under a protective order or had a protective order issued by a judge against someone else, that they could carry a concealed weapon. And they had 45 days to, to get the training to be issued a permit. But that's some of the most dangerous time, is right at the time that, that protective order is issued. And so that was something we thought was a very good idea there's something we could do to help victims of crime, and that was that was vetoed. Um, another piece of legislation said that uh, no locality could adopt an ordinance procedural policy that restricts the enforcement of federal immigration laws. Now we see what's going on across the country. And that's that's like a pretty good idea, you know. Uh, if, if, it's, if it's the law, then uh, it should be enforced, and you know some areas aren't doing that, and that was vetoed. Um, the, another one, and it was known as the Religious Liberty Law, uh, the Tax Bill uh, 2025, basically says that a pastor um, cannot be forced to marry people uh, that would be against uh, his strongly held religious beliefs. And that would boil down to not having to marry uh, same sex uh, couples. And also that religious charities would not be subjected to policies that would be against their religious, strongly held positions. Now, one of those examples would be Hobby Lobby. You all remember that, the discussion about that. 
Little Sisters of the Poor. That was a Catholic organization that went through some of the same things. So that was that was uh, vetoed as well. Uh, another one uh, is uh, House Bill uh, 4191, and that bill would simply uh, require schools to notify parents if their child is enrolled in a course in which the instructional material or related activities could include the sexually explicit content. Now the only thing that would happen would be to give the, 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 the parent uh, an, an option for something that would be uh, comparable but not quite as graphic. So, uh, some situations have been where children have actually uh, become very upset uh, at reading some of the things that are literature, but it's a little graphic and a little bit too much for, for, uh, for young children. Um, that's basically what I wanted to go over with you uh, tonight, um, and I'll be glad to take questions now, either after Frank finishes either one. Take them, take them together, either way you all want to do it. Well, well, Tommy did such a good job, there's nothing to say. <laughs> I'll talk about Japan instead. Uh, he he just is, got back from Japan. Uh, so my son is in the Navy, and he's over there for a couple of years. And so my wife insisted that she was going to see her son in two years. So we went over there, and, and I, I love history. And uh, it, it was, uh, I'm used to American history, and Virginia history, and European history, but no no real knowledge of, of Japanese history, but it was just fascinating. Um, and, and, and my son was a good enough guide that we never got hungry and we never got lost. So we, we couldn't, couldn't, couldn't go bad there, but um, we had a little tough time uh, sleeping on the floor. But uh, other than that, we <laughs> survived. Uh, Tommy did do a good job. I, I'll, I'll mention the budget again. We had to cut $1.2 billion out. That meant there had to be some reshuffling because there was some things we had to do. He had proposed giving a uh, bonus to the state employees. Uh, what happens there is that does not build up their retirement at all. So they were much happier that we gave them a raise instead of a bonus. The state trooper issue uh, was getting very bad because we could not train them as fast as they were leaving. So we spend at least a hundred thousand dollars per trooper. By the time you advertise the opening, you go through the applications, you pick the ones, you put them to the school. Uh, they get six months, twelve months, a year, two years under the belt, and they are prime target not only of, of uh, the cities like Virginia Beach and the Richard County. Right but also Texas uh, was coming up here and recruiting our guys. Uh, so we were losing them faster than we were getting them, and that's not a good situation. So we had to do something there. Um, the, um, one of the bigger issues that we dealt with this year that uh, was the issue of opioid addiction. Uh, that is, uh, is, is driving everything, and it's driving crime, driving mental health, uh, it's driving uh, hospitals for immediate acute care, uh, and there seems to be no end in sight right now. Uh, when, uh, when my friend Augie Walmeyer wrote a book about the extremes of Virginia, uh, and I encourage you all to take a look at it and find it, and he talked about essentially southwest Virginia, south, south Virginia, and eastern shore and the problems we were having. Well, one of the things he broke down was, uh, uh, was drug use. And the number of deaths from drug use in Southwest Virginia was ungodly. Uh, I said, well, I wonder what South South was. So I looked at our area, and actually we were a lot better than they, and we were better, better off than a lot of the suburbs. So this is not just an issue of poverty. My claim is we don't have enough money to uh, buy the heroin and the uh, meth, that, meth, uh, meth that they make in Southwest Virginia on the line there. Um, but we tried to try to kind of figure out a way to, get, to at least slow that down. I don't think we're going to stop it. Um, one thing I was surprised Tommy did mention was the issue of dog hunting. Uh, 
the uh, speaker of the house put in a bill to uh, say that you'd have to pay a hundred dollar fine for each dollar that went over cost somebody else's property. So that group of folks got six dogs with them and they go across one farm and onto the next farm. You've already gotten twelve hundred dollars. Then you go get them and you bring them back. That's another twelve hundred dollars. So you'd be in um, it wouldn't take long to get to a way of dog hunting at that rate. So uh, luckily the house stopped that before we got to see it. Um, the uh, in the veto session, one of the bills that a uh, friend Richard Stewart from up in Fredericksburg area had was that he had found out that um, the state of Maryland is getting the list of um, uh, concealed weapon permits from Virginia. And they're matching them up with tags. And if they see those cars driving to Maryland, they're arresting them, stopping them, searching the vehicles, and arresting them. Uh, nobody considered that right. Uh, but the governor decided he was going to uh, put the one man, one gun a month bill as an amendment to that. And um, we stopped that, but we don't know whether the governor veto that bill, but it, it, it makes no sense if somebody's got a concealed weapon in the trunk of their car that they get stopped uh, when they got it legally and, and rightfully. Um, the um, veteran services have been having some problems uh, with, we have a foundation where you can take private money and they can, they can things like build ramps in people's houses and build houses, uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, the government employees, Virginia, Virginia Services, Veteran Services, uh, was being a little careless about where, about taking some of that foundation money. So we decided that uh, we would have a, a separate, we would put a stronger brick wall between the two, and that created a little bit of controversy, but we finally had that done. And the, uh, the Admiral, the Secretary, agreed that it shouldn't have been happening, but uh, he knows he's not going to be there a long time, so he didn't. He wasn't going to worry about changing that. A um, couple of things that, that, that I worked on dealt with public procurement, and we got a mess in the state. Part of it is because Universities are uh, playing games, I guess is the best way of saying it. Um, they, uh, they contribute to the university's foundations. Uh, that who, do, who donates to the foundations is not public knowledge. And then with uh, what's called construction manager at risk, seeing at risk, they then get called in to make a proposal when they want to build a new building and did not bid it, even though the law says you're supposed to bid. Uh, so we're, we're paying more than we should, probably about five or six percent more for new construction than we should be. Uh, so a couple of us have been focused on that for a, year, a couple of years now, trying to settle that down. I think we've got some control it's, it's a problem. The other thing is that when the governor McCullough came in, he wanted to help uh, uh, very small businesses. And he did by creating a, a set aside for micro businesses. Um, the problem was he didn't he didn't put any parameters on it. So if you fit into the uh, the category of being a small uh, micro business, say you had ten employees. Uh, you if, and they've been buying from a small business, then you got the business. The small business didn't get a bit chance to bid on it. Uh, so people were getting these bids and then going to Walmart's or Sam's or whatever and buying stuff and marking it up three or four hundred percent, and uh, nobody was bothering to check it. Uh, 
so we we we, we limited to the, the small business, the micro business can get a five percent markup above the next competing bid, which is fair. gives gives a chance to start, but it does not give away the taxpayer money. So. We, uh, I was surprised the governor didn't veto that. I think he just missed it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, that uh, was that one. The, the other big thing was the, uh, the issue of the Economic Development Partnership. I guess everybody read about what happened in Appomattox a year or two ago when uh, they uh, were trying to recruit business and somehow $1.4 million got out the door. Well, when we started checking, we realized that there was not much check and balance in that system. So we negotiated back and forth with the House for most of the session. I think it was the last bill that passed. Uh, we, we finally came to terms so that uh, we have more control over it. We, get, uh, we, we, we essentially eliminated the board and want to bring back the ones that had proven themselves to, that they were actually working and doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, but those, those checks and balances General Assembly will know what's happening um, and, and stop it before it gets too far in line. Putting, a, putting a, an internal auditor that speaks, that, that reports to the General Assembly, to the governor, and to the board, not to the uh, not to the manager. That was a problem. The manager was getting all the information. The board was coming in, having a nice lunch, and going home, and being told everything flight. Aren't doing their legal responsibility. So I think that probably uh, covers most a lot of the things. Uh, my trip to Japan, I really forgot everything in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do a little bit of digging back down and figure out what happened. I couldn't even remember what I introduced. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Questions? Uh, just a uh, quick logistics question. I know we uh, tend to send. Um, some ideas or, or proposals down to you guys, and we generally don't think about it until the last minute. When is uh, generally too late to uh, to send ideas to you guys for for prepping for the next session? When is too late? <laughs> right. <laughs> I think the probably better question is when would be the best time. <laughs> right. Right. Well, that's uh, too late. Is 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 the day after uh, the the uh, deadline, which right. is the first week. Right. <laughs> but. Uh, it, uh, I think Greg did a, a good job of, uh, with the lottery thing, of, of the timing of it, of moving it forward so some people are paying attention. Not enough people were paying attention or taking it seriously until uh, me and Mel and Mako uh, finally got a hold of it and started paying attention. And, and, uh, they, were, they were split. They didn't know how to deal with it because Mako has cities and towns, both of them. Cities get money for education, towns don't. So they had to decide who, which side they were going to fall on. And uh, regrettably, the cities probably would have the greater ear. Uh, the counties, uh, Vaco was, most of our schools were operated by counties, so they were uh, not enamored with it. But both groups agreed that they would work, try to find some solution to getting some of the money back where the, uh, where the that the sales were, um, and and so they may come up with a plan, but but the um, but if you can start getting people prepared, that would be affected. Uh, I think that that would. Uh, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to get back to. Is, you know, certainly if you if you know by the early fall an idea, it would be good to start letting us try to work it out. I agree with Frank. Was early fall would be a good time. However, if it's something concerning your town charter, you've got a lot of time to have public meetings and public notice, you know, and so forth. So that may require a little more time. But uh, if you let us know by the fall, it gives us plenty of time to, to uh, fit it into our legislative package and, and uh, <coughs> uh, to run it by legislative services and so forth. So that, that, that would be fine. But uh, I also want to say one thing. Uh, you see the reason that I was at Frank was second. He takes care of the things I forget. <laughs> I forgot the dog did. Yeah. <laughs> that the house by one, off by one vote. And, and who, who would have thought that the speakers would be able to lost? You know, we just counting the sentence to save us on that one, very honestly. 
And we put them a hard fight in, in, on the House side, and it came down to the vote. There were four people not voting, and uh, for some reason, but whatever, the vote was 47, 4, and 48 against. And to give the Speaker credit, he could have brought the bill back up again and twisted arms and so forth. I think he realized that he had used the, uh, the, the authority and power of the Speaker's position enough. And as, you know, the Speaker occurs an awful lot of weight. He, the person that assigns legislation to committees, assigns people to committees, and so forth. So, um, and then, too, you know, he has resigned uh, or stepping down, uh, won't run again. And so that, that's going to uh, that's going to be a big void to fill because he's done an outstanding job. He's, he's been um, spoken of by both sides as being very fair. Can we infer that Delegate Cox will be the next man in line? Yeah. And to be the speaker? Yeah, see, we've had a consensus vote, of course. He takes the actual vote yet, but he's he is a friend of Nottaway and a friend of Crew, I know. Right. And, and Todd Gilbert uh, will be uh, the majority leader, and the only thing that remain would be uh, the, the whip. Okay. So we're very, very pleased to have good leadership in the position and so forth. But I appreciate Frank bringing the things that I did forget. Right. <laughs> Mr. Abel, any questions? No other than tell Frank we got it down here too. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing or heroin, it's, it's around. Let me say one thing about that. Our, 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 our numbers were higher on, on marijuana than other parts of the state, but I think it, it really does do with money, but yeah, there's there. oh, methods here. all over the place. My little town, I see it. You know, but one thing people may not realize is a lot of the drug crisis today is not from what you would consider to be drug addicts. It's from people who were on uh, pain medications. And, and that, that's one thing that we were trying to crack down on is reduce the number of, of uh, instances where these real strong pain, pain medications have to be given. I had called for someone in my district back in the summer. And it was the same as what they were going through for their wife. It had a back operation and it got on uh, pain medication and was just addicted. And that he worked with her and actually got her off of it one time and she got back on it. And then I've had, I've had several people uh, ask me about that and tell me what the circumstances they had. And Frank's exactly right. That's a, that's a scourge. But it's not like you think. It's not like, it's still people who are graduating from lower uh, class drugs, but it's also coming from people that, that uh, are taken by the case. I had a friend of mine that had a shoulder operation. He told the doctor for well, the first day or so, put him on Percocet. After that, he told me, he said, step him down to something else because he just couldn't let him stay on, on this very high powered and possibly addictive medicine. So it's a very real problem. Mr. Nain, any questions? Uh, no, the, the only thing, uh, how about the funding for <laughs> For the you said y'all had funding for the police, like like the state troopers, sheriff's department. Yeah. How about is it, it are y'all adding any more money to it? What's it was it the four ninety nine? Do we usually get for our police department? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think so, but I have to go back and check and I'll try to. Cause see, what we're up against now is the, uh, this day pro, where we're getting ready to install and all the, the police department's going with it's, it's, it's a software program, right? I need that for us now. Yeah. And um, it, it's going to cost us a lot of money to do with that. And I didn't know there was any funding for that, or if y'all knew or not. There may be some law enforcement grant money out there available. But what's that going to cost the town? Y'all have any idea? 30000 uh, 30, 38, 30, uh, 35, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a difference. 30 something. <laughs> 30 and 38. It's a nice chunk of change, I tell you that. Uh, but they say we have to have it uh, to be networked into the uh, state police and so forth. I don't recall that issue being a part of the budget, but certainly something we may have to consider next year. Yeah. Ms. Stetson? Thank you for coming. Mr. Foss? Thank you for coming. Mr. Walker? I'd like to just add, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight, Frank and I, and uh, I'm always willing to come and answer questions, and if there's ever anything that uh, we can do for you, be sure either call or come by or whatever, just let us know. The door's always open. So what can we do to help you Serve our people. <laughs> well, I want to do the same thing. Take care of the folks. Well, just, just keep 
folks going straight and <laughs> so we don't have to spend so much money on law enforcement. <laughs> okay, that works. That works. Does anybody in the audience have any questions they would like to address to our representatives? Very well. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. citizens can take up to three tires a day to the county dump, the county landfill, at no charge. When we take stuff down there, we get charged. So, and it comes out it's taxpayer money, so it's better really for the citizen to do it. One line ain't four. Makes sense. Um, for all practical purposes, the budget is complete as far as we're concerned. Uh, what that means is that we've gone through each line item, line by line. Uh, we've done evaluations, we've plugged in numbers. Uh, we have handed out copies to all the department heads and asked them for any feedback. Uh, to date, I have not received any. Um, what I plan on doing in the next week, we'll probably forward a copy out it in the form of a packet, like a council packet. Uh, there'll be a draft budget for your review, and I would propose a budget work session for Monday the uh, 27th, 24th. I said at 7, but we can do it at any particular time. Sometimes we start early because it's a, it's not a regular meeting. Uh, 6 o'clock sometimes is where I think. I'm flexible that day. It, it doesn't matter. 
with the home. I'm very flexible that if we want to do it in the afternoon, that's a what time is that? Uh, 24. When? Uh, what I hope to do is go through there and um, the, the budget is balanced right now. There was a certain amount of overage, which is a good thing. We took that overage and we placed it in the sewer rehabilitation fund uh, for the West End, but there is room to play with, if you, if you will, because I know some of y'all may have some things that you want, that you want to bring up. But uh, as it sits right now, give or take, it's balanced. I think we've got a couple of little things that keep showing up. But, <coughs> Um, I want to thank Tiffany for the work she's done on it. We put a lot of time and effort into this thing, and it's, it's not an easy, not an easy job. And we put a lot of thought into it, uh, and I appreciate the you know, all the department heads' um, input as well. Uh, around the first week now, the first week of May, we're going to be conducting the town wide flushing and fire hydrants. Uh, we'll, have, we'll advertise it in the paper, we'll do a code red, and we'll let everybody know that that's going on. Um, it's necessary to rid the system and it's settled debris in the lines. Uh, we have a particular problem sometimes when someone opens up the fire hydrant. You'll notice uh, in your area if they've done it, that the water's going to be discolored. That particular discoloration is coming primarily from the bell of the fire. It's not in the lines. It's causes stir up. So, and it's always a good idea that the health department expects us to ask that we flush twice a year. So we'll be doing that. It takes place. We're now doing it at like 11 o'clock at night. So it doesn't really bother anybody in particular. Um, be, be, there'll be more notification of that as we get closer to it. When you try to do it in May? First week of May. First week of May. And there's a method there because we've got some testing water testing and things that will be done at the plant the second week and you prefer to go ahead and do it. So. <coughs> and again, it should not cause anybody any problems at all unless you do all your washing and all after 11 o'clock then you won't have a problem. Our water is in good good shape and we get very, very few problems with it other than every now and then when the water line breaks or something that stirs up things so I'm going to have some trouble. Um, the only other thing I We've got several spraying projects, but I wanted to let y'all know one of them includes road repairs. Um, there are several streets within the town that are not in the VDOT system. They belong to the town, and that creates a, a whole lot of problem for us because we're not necessarily set up to take care of road work. We do the best we can with what we have. Uh, so one of these in particular, we're going to try to bring up the state specs so that they'll take it over. I'm not sure we'll be able to do that because their their requirements are a whole lot stricter than well than they do themselves. Put it that way. I know that's hard to understand, but they'll come in and want a certain thickness, or um, they want ditching, and they want a, you know a width and that type of thing. When across the road, their own road is not even close to that. But that's just the way the hot is. So if we can afford to do it, we will we'll try to break. And the area we're looking at is West Tennessee Avenue, which is uh, between Dade, Dade Street and Market Street. And we're waiting, we're waiting for asphalt plants to open up before we can start working on that. And that's pretty much where I am. All right, any questions for the town manager? Just one quick uh, question there. Um, I noticed in the uh, bill sheet that we, uh, we spent uh, a good amount of money for our annual audit. Uh, is that complete? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm begging this. It is. It's been completed and we've received uh, the final. Uh, to particularly, nobody pays any attention to it unless there's something wrong. There right. isn't anything wrong. But yes, we do have that. Yeah. And I forgot to bring them. My I, apologies. I, I, we just slipped them right. So. In, in just, a, just a follow up on that, uh, I believe the auditor's own standards are they're supposed to communicate with those charged with governance. So that means that they, they're supposed to come in and talk to council and explain everything. That, that's been brought up. I think you brought it up last year. Right. And we can ask them to do that. We have not asked them. I'd be interested. Can they do it at the budget session? Well, I don't see why not. Do we have to pay them extra? Mm hmm. I'm sure. That's a sad the written report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they may not charge us for that. 
Well, if they don't charge us, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll ask them if they do charge us. Uh, we pay them a considerable amount. So. I, I saw that. <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, it's good. I mean, I, I, they do what they're supposed to do, and they let us know how things are going, and they ask a lot of questions, and, and they come back with a report that says that everything is as it should be, which makes me feel better, makes us all feel better that uh, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So, and the citizens should feel pretty good about spending that money because it tells them that we are taking care of their family. So we can, we can certainly ask them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, no town attorney's report tonight. She is incapacitated. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going into the mayor's report, I'll go very quickly. Uh, we had some AmeriCorps volunteers at uh, Jenny, what well, we hope to be Jenny's Park on April 4th. Uh, they went in and uh, helped clean up some more. Uh, there's a lot of trash back up in there. They picked up a lot of trash. They started cutting some uh, trail. Uh, Mr. Bob Timberlake also did a pro bono survey of the boundary line so that we know exactly where it's at, where we can cut through there and uh, start cleaning what we know it belongs in there. Uh, the crew Kiwanis are hosting a town of crew cleanup on the 13th of May from 8 a.m. to noon. They will meet at the town hall to split into teams around the business district to pick up trash and debris. This is an annual event held before the crew homecoming. All citizens are encouraged to participate. Um, those that cannot go downtown can help by cleaning up their own yards or their own alleyways, basically picking up trash on the street in their front lawn, in, their, in the front of their house. Uh, everybody, everybody's got a role to play, and I would encourage the general public to consider supporting the cleanup in some form or fashion, whether they go out and do it as a group or just go out on their own and uh, hit around their block or hit around the house. Um, on the 31st of March, uh, we were in, we had a meeting. Uh, I was meeting with the town manager and the finance committee chairman and the director of public works was in there and we began talking about uh, repairing or rehabilitating and replacing the West End sewer lines. We had, um, we had gotten positive, a positive verbal report from DEQ regarding the East End, all the improvements that it made and all that, the, the work that was done there. So that leads us now to start, or at least start looking at the West End. And uh, in the discussions, we kind of came up with a game plan, and I did draft that out in a memo form to make it official. And I think each of you have a copy of that, uh, and it's detailed in that memo. But we will obviously start with testing, smoke testing, looking at lines, identifying, and then prioritizing those lines that need to be repaired, replaced, or rehabilitated. Whatever, whatever works best for the. Uh, uh, town's pocketbooks, uh, and, uh, but that at least puts us on, on track to start fixing those things that have to be fixed. Uh, that is all I have. Uh, if there are no questions, we can go into the committee reports. Mr. Sisk is not here. Mr. Knight, <coughs> talk infrastructure. No, we can we, we do. Uh, what about finance? No, you, no, I don't have anything for finance. I, I, I did talk to Stevie. For, uh, we, we've got a meeting with the at the airport on Wednesday. Okay. And, uh, at what we'll, time? This is seven seven o'clock. Okay. We're gonna meet with uh, some of the people that probably own some of the rent the hangars and stuff like that right there, and just give them pretty much up to date on what's going on at the airport. Okay. Okay. Anything else? That's it. All right. First up, Ms. Stinson. We welcomed another new police officer. Um, his name is Rondell White. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's, on the, he's on the street, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you, he's a big fella, so you'll see. <laughs> Good. Can we uh, meet the new officers at some point during some meeting? Perfect. Sure. Just introduce them to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, They've been doing a good job of going around. Introduce yeah, themselves. The oh, okay, there you go. I've seen them walk in the streets. Mm -hmm. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Mr. Foss. No report. No report. Uh, Mr. Biscuit. Uh, just uh, real quick, if you haven't been there yet, uh, go try El Mariachi, the new uh, Mexican restaurant. I've been there twice already. Three times. Um, very nice. 
I, uh, in fact, I, I went out, uh, I walked from my house there uh, Friday night, uh, just for a couple of reasons. Well, to, to get up my steps, to, uh, uh, I, I also plan on getting, um, trying their uh, tequila selection uh, in, in Monty Drive back. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe they have their ABC license yet. Yeah. So. so you were able to walk back. Right, so, so, so I walked back. Um, I, I, I also looked at the uh, walkability at the town, and that's something for another budget uh, cycle. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than that, uh, just try them out and uh, be sure to go to not only them, but all of our uh, local restaurants and businesses. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Uh, continuing business, the proposed sign ordinance. I don't know if infrastructure committees had a chance to uh, They have not yet. Okay. And then uh, the video upgrades, uh, I don't think the finance committees had a chance to. Yeah, to well, we, we, we've talked about it. And uh, pretty much it, we, we'll, we'll talk more about it in the... In the budget session, but right now we feel like this is something we don't really don't spend that much money on. <coughs> Plus, okay. I've, I've actually talked to people that, that I thought they were really you know, computer savvy or whatever you call it, and they said that they would not. <laughs> they said they, it's, it's, they they would not use it probably. But. Well, it's more than if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll talk during the uh, during the budget session. Okay. Uh, any new business? Um, I did have a piece of old uh, continuing business. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, was there any update on the um, animal ordinance? Yes, we have we have that. But uh, Aaron Reed got some feedback from a citizen, and, and uh, he's down with a bug oh, this week, so we haven't really had a chance to work that into the verbiage and the place it before council. <laughs> So part of that's on me. I've been pretty busy, and I, I kind of do a lot of administrative stuff. So, um, but that will be—that's not a dead issue by any means. That, that will be addressed. And then, if there's another continuing business, I do uh, two pieces of uh, new business. Go ahead. Um, I was surprised when I opened the uh, blackstone paper uh, this week and saw that there um, that the county is uh, looking at doubling our um, dispatching rates. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. Uh, I, I believe we don't currently have a written MOU with the uh, with the county for that. So I'd like to see if we can maybe set up a some kind of committee to explore various options, either creating an MOU with the county or uh, MOA with the county, or to even look at other opportunities for for dispatching, maybe. Um, uh, uh, collaborate with Blackstone and Burkeville and not the county and just look at the, the various options that we have um, for dispatching. Well, this, if we co op, and I'm just throwing this out because I'm old enough to remember this and I know Billy is too, but back in the old days we had our own dispatcher. Mm -hmm. and part of the problem though is that Crew, Burkeville, uh, well, Crew handled Burkeville, but, but Crew and Blackstone had their own dispatch and it was really costing them more money and it did better for the taxpayer in the long run to go with the county and let the county be the central uh, dispatcher. Sure. But at the same time, um, uh, in addition to payrolls, uh, at the same time everybody eventually got on the same radio frequencies, I think. Is that right? Well, they're still on a little different. They're call. still on a different They frequency. still monitor that too, though. Don't they still monitor not on the channel? Yes. <coughs> I do. I don't know what they do. We can ask. I don't. I don't know. What, I don't know what the current agreement is. I don't know how. It, I don't. I mean, I'm not up on that aspect of it. But it, it's got to be paid. Right. I, I, I guess my concern is just that I, I. I don't know enough about the situation. When I see in the paper that our rates are being doubled, and we really don't have any say in it because dispatching something it's an essential service, and sure. we can't just walk away from it. Uh, I'd like to explore all of our options. Sure. Uh, and. Forming in some sort of exploratory committee mm -hmm. to achieve that. Purpose. Well, let's let's just do some basic fact finding first sure. uh, before sure. we organize the committee. I, what I would suggest is that we get some uh, get basically do a cost benefit analysis, mm -hmm. identifying how many people you'd have to have, identifying what payroll would be, identifying you know benefits and all of that, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we have to really ascertain whether black zone would be even interested in doing it. Right. Uh, and uh, my guess is in the long run. It's Going to be cheaper than just right. And, 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 and I'm not saying go with any one specific option. Right. I just I just threw out a few suggestions. Sure. Um, I, I 
but I think the uh, at the bare minimum, if we do continue with the county, that we need a written MOA so that they can't uh, double our rates next year as well. Okay. Yeah, we haven't been that long since they up their rate. Mm -hmm. well, right. How long has it been? Two years? Five, three years? About three. Yeah. Three years. <coughs> and they up the rate. Is any only thing we knew is we got a bill for it. Yes. We were able to budget for it that year. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. <clears throat> we'll engage and uh, do some fact finding and put it on paper. That way everybody's got it on paper and we can digest it. What was the other item? Oh, the other item. Um, I was in, a, in the town office reading through uh, old minutes um, today uh, and it occurred to me that um, it may be good for the town and for uh, historical purposes if we can hire someone this summer, uh, part-time, maybe a uh, retired or, or current teacher uh, who's off in the summer, to go in and basically type up all of the uh, old minutes and so we can have them for, uh, for archiving purposes and for easily, to, to more easily uh, uh, read through them and, and search through them. I strongly concur with that, <laughs> but I'm a historian. Right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Don't we have them typed up mail? No, we have. He's talking about the handwritten minutes from some of the older books. Is that what you're talking about? The handwritten, and some of them are done with a typewriter that aren't currently on a computer. I'm, I'm thinking of digitizing it. Mm -hmm. Can they be scanned, or do they have to be retyped? Um, That's what I was thinking. I'm not sure about the. It, we, we, we want to be careful with the uh, with the let me, ones let me, from. Let me check into that. I got some friends that are kind of okay. somewhere like Muni Code could could do that for me. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all that there. Thank you, sir. You were forward, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it gets really interesting when you yeah. uh, read some of those. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was reading 1980 today. That was a fun year. Oh, yeah. That's what the Bob learned. Uh, yeah. At this time, we're going to the points of personal privilege. Mr. Foss, anything? Nothing. Mr. Stetson? Mr. Knight? No. no. Mr. Abel? Phil Mr. Lake, Repco needs to be notified of that street lights. There's still a pile on Repco? Whoever it is <laughs> runs it. <laughs> the menu. Just a couple things. Uh, we're, we're continuing on our uh, Piedmont out walking uh, competition. Uh, it seems to be uh, going really well. Um, just keep up your uh, your steps, and uh, we'll go with that. You should have um, been walking instead of reading minutes. We we should have. Uh, yeah, I should have. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on a little uh, little little down today. Um, this weekend, uh, if everyone would uh, would just uh, take it some time to uh, to remember uh, remember it's the 10 year anniversary of the uh, massacre at uh, Virginia Tech. So just take some time this weekend. But on Sunday, Easter Sunday, actually, is the, uh, is the anniversary mm -hmm. date. So just uh, remember that and happy Easter. All right. Thank you. Now, well, I have any, sir? I don't have points for you. Go ahead. I just want to mention something. I, I witnessed something yesterday. Um, it got me thinking about life in general, and we had things like that happen there in the end. Um, a good friend of mine's house burned up yesterday, and I happened to be coming by when it was burning. And what I'm trying to say is, it makes you think just for a second how quick life can change. Mm -hmm. And the things that we toil over are not really that important in the grand scheme of things. And it keeps keeps me grounded to see something like that. Um, I feel sorry for him. I, I wish there was more I could do. It's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. Who was it? Uh, Kenneth Preston. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was, um, I've never seen anything like that. I've been a part of it. We just happened to be coming by and to sit and watch them and just Presley cry all the pieces about all of it. 50, 60 years worth of heirlooms that were in that house that were going away, just like that. And it just it just taught me a lot of perspective on life. How quickly it can change. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, with that in mind, we're back in the public comment section. Any public comments, questions? Anything? All right. Good enough. Uh, we don't need any questions. I think there was a... Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, I just want to address what he... Um, 
Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker, is, um, yes, do you know if they're taking donations or anything? Um, I think it's probably too out. early for that yet. Okay. They were doing some cleanup today and trying to salvage whatever they could. And yeah. I, I'm not sure what their living arrangements are now. And they've got family, of course. And right. uh, I think they stayed with a neighbor uh, last night. So that mm -hmm. maybe down the road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor, there was one other piece of uh, business that I did want to, uh, wanted, um, given the uh, tragedy in Buckingham uh, last week, two weeks ago. Um, are there, talking of the children. Yes, there, sir. I guess. Are there any concerns with the bus stops in our town? The only one that we had a concern with, to my knowledge, was this one right here on the corner, but mm -hmm. my understanding is that it's been remedied. Okay, mm -hmm. great. I can tell you that, um, and although the arrangements in Buckingham Met, meet the state requirements for bus stops and so forth. Um, Nottaway has always had gone beyond that requirement. Um, students are not allowed to cross the street to get on the bus. The bus goes down and comes back up. And there are a number of things that Nottaway has done extra in the effort for safety. Of course, whenever um, people are involved, there's always a risk that something will go wrong. But, I, I personally feel pretty good about the regulations that are in place. Mm -hmm. Just want to check. All right. Uh, with that in mind, there's no need, I, mean, I think, to go into executive session. And at this time, I want to entertain a motion. No move. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. 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 Aye.